So and this is what my, everybody understands, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so define the problem and find the good impact uh, measurements. But, uh, but also don't do anything if it's not your passion. No, definitely. We've already reached almost 500 kids and made tremendous uh, connections, which, uh, which, uh, which I mean more than one person, I think, is, a, uh, uh, is also a way to ensure success. Uh, I, and then the government wasn't used to somebody looking at the positive, so I think they were quite intrigued. Mm. So that looking at the positives uh, is something that I naturally uh, maybe navigate to. Right. It's the impact that's going to help you open doors and yes, get sell the ID. Hi, it's Cathy Wong here, your host and producer of Crazy Dreamers TV. Here for another episode in beautiful Norway. And today we're meeting a very, very seasoned social entrepreneur, another female social entrepreneur, you know how I feel about females. And this lady here, Lisa Cooper, is a very, very seasoned entrepreneur. So I'm so glad to have her on the show. Lisa, welcome. Thank you. Wonderful to have you. I really enjoyed meeting you the other night, and that's why I really wanted to, you know, have this further conversation with you. Thanks for the opportunity. No, brilliant. Lisa, you are, um, you know, the CEO of two different social mm. enterprises, both called Catalyst, Catalyst Training, and then there's Catalyst, your foundation. Exactly. But we'll get back into that in a moment. I'd like to start this conversation with asking you, you know, everyone has this incredible passion when they start a social enterprise. I'd like to know where your passion has come from. I think it's, it's really twofold. I think it's, uh, it, it started in my family. My, my grandmother, who is now uh, 99 years old, is, wow. uh, yes, <laughs> uh, was passionate about working uh, for equal opportunity and, and, and housing. And she worked for most of her career in housing and urban development in New York City to help people get affordable housing. Uh, my father worked for the Drug Enforcement Administration uh, was uh, very high up and in responsible in international uh, operations. So he was also passionate about keeping, uh, especially kids, off drugs. And then there's my mother, who uh, who, uh, who sort of lived through the 60s, lived through the battle of uh, African Americans uh, getting the right to vote. And uh, you could always find her working, uh, working the elections uh, and trying to get people to register and, and really harassing people to vote. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. And then here yeah. I am moving to Norway after yes. meeting a Norwegian at a bar <laughs> and, uh, and, and moving to Norway when yeah. there was 2% immigrants and, and being met with that skepticism and realizing that there's something I can do about this. Mm. And then my passion for diversity, my passion for solving social problems. Uh, was sort of uh, maybe in me. Uh, it was already born in you though, right, from the moment mm. you came into the world and then obviously, you know, these different opportunities see that, saw that prosper further. Absolutely, yeah. but, but I think it's a little unique in that I, I had an education, I had a very successful in, uh, career in the private sector, tried my hand in the public sector uh, in uh, working for the Integration for Diversity uh, here in Norway and then I started so I was able to sort of combine different types of skills I also sit on several boards so that the, the skill set I bring into social entrepreneurship is uh, is um, is quite broad yes yeah well you have a wonderful set of skills you know because uh, well maybe tell us a little bit more about that I think uh, yeah. what I realized uh, early when I started my journey in social entrepreneurship I was very good at, at projects I started uh, by establishing an NGO because I couldn't quite figure out one thing mm. to do so I I would look at different social problems for example the, the fact that the, the representation of immigrants in the media was so poor so I started a project called top 10 Right. Where I found the top 10 immigrants, I, I got a jury to select them, I, I made sure that we got articles in them on the paper, in the paper, and, and that was a project that lasted for 11 years and funded by the state. And that's a social problem, uh, yeah. that's solving, uh, helping the immigrants uh, that uh, uh, sort of tell their positive stories and at the same time helping sort of society listen. Yeah. Wonderful. And how did it go? Because So you got this totally funded by the government, you were saying. Exactly. How was that? 
it, in the beginning, it was actually, it's funny you ask, it was, it was a fun ride because when we, I'd never done it before, I was working in the private sector and I just had this idea, mm. yeah, I'm sort of an idea kind of person. And mind you, this was, oh my God, 12 years ago. Yeah, you must have been quite a pioneer in this area. Yeah, and, and, and the government wasn't used to somebody yeah. looking at the positive. So I think they were quite intrigued. Yeah. And I'll never forget the, uh, the, the guy that looked at our application because he said, you know, what you've done has nothing to do with what you applied for. But we really <laughs> dig your focus. And right. if you rewrite it this way, we'll, we'll be able to support it because we, we, we see that that's a, a way of looking at yeah. uh, the challenge and uh, from a different angle. So it actually, now that I think of it, that's probably my, my uh, reason for being so passionate about positive psychology, because I am a very positive uh, person. My glass is always half full. Yes. Uh, so that looking at the positives uh, is something that I naturally uh, maybe navigate to. Right. But do you also think um, the mindset of the Norwegians is a different mindset? Possibly that could have also contributed to helping you get this off the ground? And actually, I think the mindset in Norway and the Nordics is probably the opposite because we have a, a welfare state. So social entrepreneurs are looking at social problems and the public in general thinks, oh, that's covered by the government. Why are you working with immigrants? We give them so much money. It comes from our taxes. Yeah? Uh, so so it's, that makes it a harder nut to crack right. in, in the okay. Nordics. Uh, they have, although they, it's a, a, a general awareness that even though we can throw money at the problem, we're not, we're not changing behavior, we're not changing attitudes. Whereas in America, I think there's a, a long history of uh, volunteering, of churches yes, being active. Because there's a lot more to, to help, really, exactly. isn't there? So it's, yeah. uh, but but I, it, it also means that we've sort of leapfrogged into uh, 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 an arena, and, uh, and I think Norway and the Nordics are doing it quite professionally. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud that you know we're able to sort of uh, pave the way, but we still have a lot to do. Right. Well, on that note, yeah. well, on that note, where are you wanting to go with what you're doing? What's your next crazy dream? My, my biggest crazy dream is because uh, with Catalyst and Catalyst Technologies, uh, we're really focusing on mentoring, yeah, uh, with positive psychology. Uh, and our, our vision is to have a more inclusive society, one relationship at a time. So we really focus on building relationships. We've already reached almost 500 kids and made tremendous uh, uh, connections, which, uh, which, uh, which I know will sort of be a springboard for, for, for both the kids and, and the mentors. What and age my, kids are you, sorry, what age kids are you focusing on? Uh, 18 to 30. Okay. Uh, we have had them all the way down to 13, and we are looking to expand our target group, which is one major, major goal. We're also looking to expand in Norway. We're in five different uh, communities or municipalities in a, in a bigger sense. Um, uh, and we want to expand in the Nordics. We're looking to Sweden for next year and hopefully other Nordic countries. And uh, really looking at France. I think France could be an interesting start. It's really exciting. So just tell us a little bit more about how your business model works. Mm. So we actually have uh, two companies. One is Catalyst Association. So that's the association that uh, that is responsible for really running the mentor programs, uh, the six-month programs using positive psychology. So in the association, we're we're quite good at applying for funding, finding funding, also mm -hmm. finding corporate sponsors. Then we're lucky enough to have a Catalyst Technologies, uh, which thanks to a collaboration with Aussie University Hospital. Uh, and private investors, because that's my commercial company. Mm -hmm. We're also developing a digital platform uh, that uh, uh, is also being researched together with Aussie University Hospital that will augment the, uh, the mentor experience, but also because we've recently gained the license rights to have the portal uh, as it's been developed by the Aussie University Hospital. We can also sell that to, for health outcomes. Okay. So, so it's really an exceptionally exciting time. Yes. So on one side of my life, I'm talking to investors and talking market capitalization and, yeah. and uh, equity. On the other side, I'm talking to kids and, you yeah. know, what are their dreams? Uh, so, uh, but I have um, to say my big hairy yeah. dream, dream yes. uh, Obama, uh, former President right. Obama, probably yes. one of my greatest heroes. I used to be the chairman of Democrats Abroad for eight years, so I defended oh. that man on television okay. for eight years. <laughs> right. uh, with, uh, with a lot of uh, much respect. He has an organization called My Brother's Keeper, which is very much also into uh, 
into into mentoring. So my big hairy goal is to one day collaborate with him on mentoring. That's I love that dream. That's, that's a really that's crazy big. dream. That's hairy. And I'm that's sure <laughs> you'll be able to achieve it. The hairier the better, I say, you know. Um, and you know, if somebody, um, if I know, you know, you're passionate about females because I have heard the stories about how you worked with, you know, were your top ten, right? Yeah, you worked with absolutely. a lot of immigrant absolutely. women. Uh, if a female entrepreneur would like to get into this space, have mm. you got a tip for them? I think uh, coming from, especially for me, coming from uh, the private sector, mm. uh, I think uh, the, what's the biggest challenge for social entrepreneurs is, is explaining what they're doing and why they're doing it. Yeah? <laughs> yes. So I think it, the clearer people can get is what is the social problem you are trying to address mm. yeah? and how your solution is solving it. Yeah, the, the theory of change is a, is a theoretical background that I would highly recommend yes, people, most people, definitely. Yeah. People, people look at because I think that's a lot of our, our challenge is how to communicate what we're doing, communicate the impact there because it's the impact that's going to help you open doors. Yes, and get sell funding. the idea, isn't it? Get the funding as you said. Absolutely. And also yeah. I think having research based impact measurements you know we are extremely nerdy in what we do so we have uh, we only use research based uh, indicators that have been researched one is the rosenberg self esteem survey that we use that's been around since 1962 uh, another one is hopeful futures and then there's lots of different uh, uh, impact indicators that are important because as a as a uh, as a professional and formerly a businesswoman I like to be able to talk return on investment yes so and this is what my, everybody understands right absolutely yeah, so define the problem and find the good impact uh, measurements but uh, but also don't do anything if it's not your passion no definitely because it won't last will it you so know? don't do it for an opportunistic yeah. reason yes because you will you'll you might succeed in the short term but not in the long no, term. no not so long term and you're really in this for the long haul aren't you absolutely this type of you know career path this type of business opportunity absolutely know? and um is there anything else that you would like to add in what you're doing that could be of help to anybody out there really who uh is struggling maybe with uh they have an idea already they've you know worked out what that problem is they're wanting to focus on and uh, but they just have they're struggling mm -hmm. with you know really getting this off the ground and making it sustainable. I think uh, the ability to, to network, to ask questions, to, to, to lean on others, to uh, to uh, to be curious, uh, both intellectually and, and socially, uh, uh, to be open. Uh, I also think that. One of the things I, I, I did successfully in the start was I had a, a group of people that were helping me trying to really work on the business plan and, and, and having more than one person I think is, a, uh, uh, is also a way to ensure success. Uh, I definitely agree think. with that because quite a few of the social entrepreneurs um, I've interviewed, in fact every single one of them mm -hmm. uh, has had co-founders yeah. or several mm -hmm. co-founders. I haven't had that myself, mm, but mm. I have surrounded myself with a team of people, exactly. mentors, yes, coaches, yes. confidants that I can yeah. continually bounce ideas off. And I think women are generally quite good at this, probably more so than men. Absolutely. Uh, you yeah. know, and I love what you said about that ability to ask for help mm, and mm, uh, mm. you know, and be open. And I think also having a diverse uh, set of eyes looking at uh, your plan. Um, yes. Right now, especially for Catalyst Technologies, that is off on a, on a completely different commercial path than I've been used to the last 10 years, really entrenched in social entrepreneurship. I've had the joy of working with four or five different uh, investors, uh, lawyers, uh, and uh, other commercial experts that uh, have just awed me uh, on... Uh, uh, odd me, I'm not quite sure that's an English oh, phrase. No, I'm not sure odd, but I, I know what you're saying. I understand. That English Norwegian yeah. is sort of, You're going between all Put the different languages. Put me in languages. awe, I yes. suppose. Uh, yes. Uh, on, on their contribution, their ability to understand, and, and sort of their, their help in, in, in helping me nuance and perfect. Yeah. So, and that's diversity. We need people with different... Uh, Definitely. Uh, different Definitely. Thoughts. And I love also, you know, I don't know if you've heard the stats around how you know, in this particular sector, it seems that men and women are pretty much equal yeah. in terms of the pays and, you know, the opportunities. Mm. 
and uh, I'm just now meeting so many female social yeah. entrepreneurs, particularly yeah. in Europe, yeah. uh, which I'm finding really exciting to know that females can actually have exactly the same opportunities in this space is really exciting. Yeah, that's true. I, actually, I think there are more females, uh, the, or the ones that I see in, in, in Norway. I think the, the only challenge I have is, is, yes, I think there's equal opportunity for men and women, but I think social entrepreneurs are discounted pay-wise, you know, if you compare to the private sector. It's coming, you know, yes. I think the more that are building enterprises like we are, where you have a private sector and a public sector and, and they're working, or a, a private and a, a, what am I saying, an association and, a, and a, a, that's a non-profit and a for, for-profit entity, I, I think that, that will push the bar up, but I'd, I'd like to see sort of an acceptance that social entrepreneurs can also uh, earn, uh, you know, not millions, but, but at least closer to a minimum private sector salary. Yeah, I without, agree. Without all the eyes yes, going. Yes, going, <laughs> what are you doing, you know? Mm. And this is why this show is called Crazy Dreamers. Exactly. And this is why, you know, we're doing this exactly. show to exactly. let people know that, you know, we're serious business yeah. people with serious, you know, um, visions Absolutely. and, you know, business models. In fact, I actually think we have to be better at business <laughs> because totally of, you know, what we're wanting Absolutely. to achieve, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Lisa, thank you so, so much. And, you know, we'll thank put up you. all the links so that people can contact you. Yeah, absolutely. So, I really yeah. appreciate your time with that. So, that's been another episode, guys. And you can hear, you know, how Lisa has achieved so much in really quite a short space of time. And I'm really interested in the way that she has these two parts of her business with the association and the actual for-profit side. And this is definitely a model that uh, so many social enterprises are moving towards. I know even with Moloko, we're looking at this ourselves, the foundation that can take in grants and other sources of funding that the for-profit uh, business model can't take in. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that episode and I look forward to seeing you again. Um, until next time, crazy dreaming, guys. <laughs> Bye. Crazy dreamers. Crazy dreamers. Crazy dreamers. <laughs> 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 Is crazy it? dreamers, see me. Crazy dreamers.